Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to try my best to explain to you guys how you can use AngularJS 4 and uh, JavaScript in order to asynchronously load um, data into your app so that you can use it as the front end or anywhere in your app, but you just don't want that data to be hard-coded into your JavaScript file, so you instead separate them into JSON. So in my case here, I've um, basically separated these options for this form here. So I have like advertisers and then Udemy being pulled in. And then I have all of these different regions for the network being pulled in. So US, UK, Canada, Australia. And that's all being stored over here in assets data query options dot JSON inside of my project. So uh, right here, if you're curious, I'm running Ionic framework, which is for mobile applications, but it would basically be the same process as long as it's Angular, JS, and JavaScript. Um, so you can see here, I've basically got these arrays declared. So the advertisers block, and then the networks block, and then a bunch of options, can add more later if I want. And yeah, that's pretty much what's going on there. So I have a page called Query. And that's where the majority of this stuff is happening. Well, really all this stuff, because that's this page you see here. So at query.ts TypeScript, um, you can see I've got these properties declared, networks and advertisers. Now, at the start, they're being declared as empty arrays. I think you could declare them as any, and that would be fine. Or maybe you don't even have to declare them at all. Um, but these are being referenced over in the HTML page where the Angular JS is actually doing its work. So I have these ion select um, components and for the options that are going into those ion selects, we're using at or really star ng4 equals let advertiser of advertisers and then let network of networks down below for the network select. Um, and these advertisers and networks properties, those are just over on the TypeScript page. So right now, because um, it hasn't run yet, those are completely empty. Um, so anyway, uh, in theory, what would happen? We have these empty properties, and we loop through each of the advertisers and each of the networks. And then for each advertiser or each network, we spit out advertiser.name or network.name notice the, uh, the brackets here in order to reference that. And those are going into each ion option. So in G4, basically, we only declare one ion option, but we're able to loop through all of the data, which is really nice. And we don't have to know how many there are either. Um, because obviously you saw uh, here for the network drop down, there's four options, but there's only one ion option. So that's where this becomes cool. Anyway, um, over on query.ts, after the page loads, we have to actually load in that data, which AngularJS will take and immediately refresh. Um, and I'm doing that using an injected class called data finder. So this is one I created. We'll look into the code in a second here. And it's got a method called get JSON data async. So hovering over it, you can see that that returns a promise. And then when that resolves successfully, we're using the dot then for the promise, which is going to take the data returned by that promise and put it into this dot set query options data with the data as parameter and load that into each of these two properties over here. So to point out, uh, the reason there has to be a completely separate method here, um, rather than just calling this.networks equals data networks, so this.advertisers equals data advertisers up here without declaring this separately, is because if you do that, um, this isn't actually in the, uh, I, I guess, the scope of the query page. So calling this, you won't be able to successfully reference these properties, which is an issue. But uh, you can get around that by calling this on a method rather than this on a property. So anyway, let's go into uh, get JSON data async. You can see that I'm injecting HTTP, uh, the service, into the constructor here. So that's going to automatically resolve with how everything's declared in app.module.ts for the Sionic project. Uh, I guess we can go there for a second. 
Um, so you can see I've got all these declarations, imports, uh, providers. Uh, the provider for data finder is being declared so that we can inject that into the query.ts page. And I think uh, HTTP module is where this imports is happening. So HTTP module, and then we can inject that into the, um, the data finder class. And you, you can see, of course, it's declared as at injectable so that we can inject it in query.ts as a constructor parameter. Okay, so anyway, um, let's see, where were we? Okay, so data finder ts, it's using this HTTP uh, service, and in the method get JSON data async, I'm taking a file path, uh, which is the string where the JSON file is located. In this case, it would be um, well, dot slash assets slash data slash query options JSON. You can see that right here, but it's going to vary depending on where you're storing your JSON files inside of your project. And let's go back over. So this method is returning a new promise, which means that after everything that happens in here is completed, it's going to return some data outside into query.ts that we can use and assign into networks and advertisers. So you can see when that data gets uh, basically completed in the promise or resolved rather, it proceeds to use then and the data pops in here and we pass that to the set query options data method. Okay, so what actually happens? What is it waiting on this promise to happen? So inside of the promise, we're calling this.http.get, and that's out of at angular slash, uh, slash HTTP, if you need to import that. And it's calling HTTP get on the file path, so it's going to go find where this uh, JSON file is located, and it's going to try to get that and return that as a HTTP response. Uh, well, actually, it's an observable response. So uh, what happens here is that you can subscribe to this observer, which means that when the observer actually has the data pop into it, you can run whatever's uh, listed inside of the subscribe function. Um, so in that case, it's taking the response out of the observable, and it's going to check if, well, in my case, it's going to check if the response status is 200 to 299. So remember, this is an HTTP response, so all those 404 errors or 200 success that kind of stuff, that's what you're expecting here. So making sure that it successfully uh, did the response, and if it doesn't, it's going to pass it to the reject callback, which is basically going to, uh, I believe, drop down here, and it's going to catch with the reason, handle the error, uh, debug logging stuff. Um, but if it successfully finds the file, then it's going to convert the data in this HTTP response to JSON by calling uh, basically response.json as a method. Um, and I'm storing that into JSON as, but really I could just call this and pop it right into the resolve here if I wanted to save a couple of lines of code. So ideally it resolves as a JSON array and that's gonna complete this promise, pop the data back out into wherever we called get JSON data async. And then because this promise is complete, it's going to proceed to then. We take the data, we pass it into whatever we want to do with the data. So in that case, it's set query options data for me. So pop the data in here and then assign that to the properties in this query page. And those properties, networks and advertisers, those are being referenced on my HTTP page, uh, HTML page, sorry, um, where we have ng4 advertisers and networks. Those are the two properties. So then we just loop through uh, which, well, and then we just loop through these two properties, which at this point should be filled in arrays and spit out the names for those properties uh, for every option found. And uh, once again, just to point out this dot name thing here, that's just referring to advertisers and then you have the item inside of here. And then we have the name key and we get the value. Uh, there's also ID keys here stored. Um, 
which is for something completely unrelated. Um, but yeah, we just have to call advertiser.name, grab that, network.name, grab that for each one. And in the end, we get these lists of ion options, which get uh, basically spat out when we click on the select item. And then at the end, we get these uh, items loaded into the select component. And we can use them in our page as normal. Um, my next step here would probably be grab the value out of here and put them into these buttons here as a parameter for query button clicked. Uh, but that's how you actually get the JSON data loaded into your application. So it's um, so this is something I was trying to figure out for quite a few hours. So hopefully I've clarified this for anyone else going through the same issues. Uh, one of the samples that I used to kind of get some ideas from here, um, simple Ionic 3 app. I'm going to uh, link to this on GitHub by Christoph Anderson. Uh, pretty cool tool. Um, very similar to what I'm doing in this app and also includes some of my code down below. So hopefully that gets you guys going. Thanks for watching this video and hopefully I'll see you guys in my future programming content.